Hello everybody. Myself, Sankareshwari, Assistant Professor of Physics, BV Vanya Perman College, Parman, Vridhanagar. I am going to explain about the isothermal and adiabatic changes. Let me explain about isothermal change. When a change in the pressure and volume of a given mass of gas takes place at constant temperature, the change is called an isothermal change. So consider a gas is contained in a cylinder and the gas is compressed by a piston which is shown in the figure. The piston moves very slowly. Now the walls of the vessel and the piston are good conductors. Then the gas will be at the same temperature throughout. The work done on the gas is converted into heat in the gas. The heat is conducted away by the cylinder and the piston to the surrounding air outside. The compression in this gas is isothermal that is at constant temperature. Next equation for the isothermal change of a perfect gas. A gas under isothermal process obeys Boyle's law. Let P and V be the pressure and volume of a given mass of a perfect gas undergoing isothermal changes. Now, the isothermal change is represented by the equation PV is equal to constant. Adiabatic change. When a change in the pressure and volume of a given mass of gas takes place in a complete thermal isolation, it is called as adiabatic change. During an adiabatic process, no heat enters or leaves the system, but the temperature changes. Now consider the gas is enclosed in a cylinder which is fitted with a piston as shown in the uh, above figure. Now assume that both the cylinder and piston are perfect insulators of heat. If the gas is suddenly compressed, the temperature of the gas increases. Similarly, if the gas suddenly expands, its temperature falls. Thus, there is no exchange of heat between the gas and the surroundings. The compressions and rarefactions produced in air during the propagation of sound waves is an example of adiabatic change. The sudden expansion of the enclosed air into the atmosphere when a motor tire burst is approximately an adiabatic change. Hence the tire is cool. Next the equation for the adiabatic change of a perfect gas. Let a quantity of heat dq be supplied to one mole of a perfect gas. The heat is used for increasing the temperature of the gas by dt and doing external work for the expansion of the gas which is represented as pdv. Therefore dq is equal to cv dt plus pdv. In an adiabatic change no heat is supplied from outside therefore dq is equal to 0. Then cv dt plus pdv is equal to 0. For one mole of a perfect gas, PV is equal to RT. Differentiate the equation and find out the expression for DT. And the expression for DT will be PDV plus VDP divided by R. Now substitute the expression for DT in equation 1. We find CV VDP plus CP PDV is equal to 0. If we divide the equation by CV PV, we will get dp by p plus cp by cv into dv by v is equal to 0. We know that cp by cv is equal to gamma. That is nothing but the ratio of specific heat capacities of the gas. Therefore, dp by b, p plus gamma into dv by v is equal to 0. When we integrate this equation, we will get pv power gamma is equal to constant, which gives the expression for adiabatic change. Next, we can derive the relation between pressure and temperature. We know that the adiabatic equation is represented by PV power gamma is equal to constant. For a perfect gas, PV is equal to RT. RV is equal to RT by P. Now, substitute the value of V in equation 1 that is PV power gamma. Then, we get P 
power gamma minus 1 divided by t power gamma is equal to constant. Then we can derive the relation between volume and temperature. Again, we have to consider the equation PV power gamma is equal to constant. We know that for a perfect gas PV is equal to RT. Then the expression for pressure will be P is equal to RT by V. Now substitute the expression for P in the equation PV power gamma is equal to constant. Then we will get TV power gamma minus 1 is equal to constant. Next we will discuss about the two specific heat capacities of a gas. We know that the gases can be expanded or compressed easily. To fix the value of the specific heat capacity of a gas either the pressure or volume should be kept constant. There are two types of specific heat capacities of a gas. One is Cv that is specific heat capacity at constant volume. Another one is Cp the specific heat capacity at constant pressure. So now consider one mole of a perfect gas which is kept in a non-conducting cylinder which is provided with a frictionless piston of area A. Now T represents the temperature of the gas, P is the pressure of the gas and V is the volume of the gas. By applying some heat, the temperature of the gas increases by the amount dT. Now we assume that the piston is fixed so that the volume of the gas is constant. Now the quantity of the heat given to the gas will be Cv dT. Now this heat is used in increasing the internal energy of the gas. The same gas is now given with a certain amount of heat at constant pressure so that the temperature increases by the amount dT. Since the gas is heated at constant pressure, the volume increases, the gas expands. Hence the piston moves up through a distance dx. dV is the increase in volume of the gas. Quantity of heat supplied to the gas is given by Cp dT. Now the heat is used in two ways. First one, in raising the internal energy of the gas corresponding to a rise of temperature of dT. Second one, in doing the work of expanding the gas against external pressure. So external work done by the gas in expansion is equal to force into distance. That is represented as PdV. Therefore Cp dT is equal to Cv dT plus PdV. We know that for a perfect gas PV is equal to RT. Therefore PdV is equal to RdT. And we uh, also know that Cp minus uh, Cv is equal to R. So this formula is known as Mayer's formula. So Mayer's formula is given as Cp minus Cv is equal to R. That is the difference between the two specific heat capacities of the gas will be equal to R. Where R is the universal constant. Let me explain why Cp is greater than Cv. When a gas is heated at constant volume, the pressure increases. All the heat energy is used in increasing the internal energy of the gas. As the volume is kept constant, no external energy is done by the gas. On the other hand, when a gas is heated at constant pressure, the volume increases. The gas expands against constant external pressure and some external work is done. In addition to this, there is a rise of temperature. Hence, the heat energy supplied to the gas is used in two ways. First one, in raising the temperature. Second one, in doing some external work as the gas expands. Therefore, Cp is greater than Cv. Now, let me explain uh, one experiment to find out uh, the expression for Cv that is the specific heat capacity at constant volume. So Joly's differential steam calorimeter is used for finding Cv. So now this is the experimental setup. Now the apparatus consists of two hollow metal spheres A and B. The two spheres are exactly similar in volume, mass etc. And they are suspended inside the steam chamber C from the two pans of a sensitive balance. Now the spheres are provided with catch waters to collect the water condensed on the spheres. 
two umbrella shaped covers u1 and u2 prevent any water condensed on the top of the chamber from falling on the spheres and two electrically heated coils p1 and p2 are placed round the suspension wires to prevent water from condensing round the narrow mouth of the steam chamber now one of the sphere is filled with the experimental gas while the other sphere is completely evacuated by counterpoising the mass of the gas capital m filling one of the spheres is found the initial temperature theta 1 of the gas is also noted by using the thermometer now steam is admitted into the chamber condensation of the steam takes place on both the spheres but more steam condenses on the sphere that contain the gas than on the other because the enclosed gas also has to be heated from theta 1 to the temperature theta 2 of steam by counterpoising the balance the mass small m of the steam condensed due to the enclosed gas is formed now heat gained by the gas is given by mcv into theta 2 minus theta 1 heat lost by the steam will be ml here l is the latent uh, specific latent heat of steam and capital m represent mass of the gas filled in this sphere theta 1 is the initial temperature of the gas theta 2 is the final temperature of the gas and small m represent mass of the steam condensed cv is the specific heat capacity at constant volume so by principle of method of mixtures we know that the heat gained by the gas is equal to the heat lost by the steam so by equating the two equations we can find cv is equal to ml divided by cv into theta 2 minus theta 1 so this is the expression for specific heat capacity at constant volume now uh, we can make uh, some corrections for accurate result that is the expansion of the sphere containing the gas is due to increase in temperature and pressure now this may be estimated from the coefficient of copper and the initial and final pressures of the gas in the sphere corrections for the upthrust on the condensed water on the surface of the two spheres then correction for any slight difference between the thermal capacities of the two spheres thank you